Over the past 200 years, we have built a globalized economy based on fossil fuels and added 555 billion tons of CO2 to the atmosphere. The ocean has absorbed more than a quarter of this carbon, thereby increasing seawater acidity by 30%. Land is also a significant carbon sink. However, half of our CO2 emissions remain in the atmosphere, causing a carbon traffic jam that's pushing our climate towards dangerous new conditions. This CO2 must urgently be removed, and the ocean, with its enormous volume and natural carbon pumps, might provide the key. CO2 diffuses into the surface layer of the ocean whenever it is more abundant in the air than in the water. Once dissolved, powerful carbon pumps remove CO2 from the surface, pulling yet more of it into the ocean. Ocean currents move CO2-saturated surface waters poleward, where they cool and sink, pulling our emissions into the deep ocean, where they can remain isolated for thousands of years. Over geologic timescales, weathering of rock washes alkaline molecules into the ocean, thereby converting dissolved CO2 into bicarbonate and carbonate forms. This natural alkalinity allows the ocean to take up more CO2 without further increasing ocean acidity. On much shorter timescales, primary producers photosynthesize, using sunlight and nutrients to turn dissolved CO2 into organic carbon that fuels the food web. As organisms feed on one another, and trillions of microbes digest even the smallest of particles, most organic carbon is rapidly recycled back into CO2. However, a small fraction of organic carbon escapes the food web and is sequestered in the ocean. This includes organic matter that sinks into the deep ocean or is structurally so complex that it becomes inaccessible to microbes and is sequestered in the ocean for thousands of years. Organic carbon also gets trapped in coastal soils by salt marshes, mangrove forests and seagrass meadows. Alone, the ocean's carbon pumps are too slow to reverse climate change. However, with research and innovation, we might be able to give these natural pumps a boost and avert the worst consequences of climate change. For example, large-scale seaweed farming or ranching of free-floating sargassum can remove the carbon stored in plant biomass by sinking it to the ocean floor or by locking it up in long-lived bioproducts. In nutrient-poor waters, the export of carbon to the deep ocean could be boosted by artificial fertilization of phytoplankton, either directly with the help of ships or planes, or by artificial upwelling of deeper nutrient-rich waters. Such fertilization could also enhance the growth of seaweed. Protecting and restoring blue carbon ecosystems would prevent emissions associated with ecosystem degradation and can increase storage of organic carbon in marine soils. Ocean alkalinity can be enhanced in a number of ways, thereby increasing the ocean's absorptive capacity for CO2 and counteracting ocean acidification. Proposed approaches include the direct addition of alkaline minerals to beaches or the open ocean, accelerated weathering of limestone or silicate rock in controlled reactors or electrochemical seawater treatment facilities. Finally, liquid CO2 from emissions captured on land could be stored in subsurface geological formations or in the deep ocean. It has even been proposed to increase water density at the poles to accelerate the downward transport of CO2 to the deep ocean. Some of these approaches might have a real shot at sequestering billions of tons of CO2. Their evaluation in terms of efficacy, environmental impact and cost. Field testing and potentially large-scale deployment will require multi-sectoral collaboration, innovation and an enabling governance system. Join the conversation at oceancdr.net.